Hey everybody, welcome to another Vector Tuts Quick Tip Screencast. My name is Cheryl Graham. Today I'm going to show you how to do this emboss effect using a few quick tricks with the appearance panel. First I'm just going to draw out a rectangle for the background which is filled with my global swatch. I'll go ahead and lock that down. Now I'll draw out another rectangle for the border and I'm not being very precise here. Then I'll switch the fill and stroke color so I have a stroke but no fill. You can also do this by pressing Shift X on your keyboard. Now with that still selected, I'm going to go to the Appearance panel and take the Stroke Color off. I'll just click the No Color swatch from this drop-down menu. I'm going to hide the edges so you can better see the effect. So we now have a path with no stroke, and I'm going to go down here and add a new stroke to it. I'll change this stroke color to 50% gray. This is going to be our shadow, so I'll just grab it and drag it underneath the original stroke. Now I can click this flippy triangle and change the opacity and the blending mode. Since it's a shadow, I want it to be multiply. I also want it to be offset a bit from the original stroke, so I'll make sure I have the path selected, you can see it's highlighted here, and go up to Effects, Distort, and Transform to Transform. I just want to nudge it down and to the right a bit, so I'll enter one point in both the horizontal and vertical fields. I'll click the Preview button and you can see it moves just slightly. I also want to give the stroke a bit of a blur, so I'll keep it selected and go back up to the Effects menu and choose Blur, Gaussian Blur. I'll give it a radius of just one or two pixels, and when I click OK, it'll take some time to apply the effect. This is a good time to go up to your Document Raster Effects settings under the Effects menu and make sure that they're set to High. So there's our shadow. Let me zoom in so you can see it better. I'm going to grab this stroke and make a copy of it by dragging it onto the new icon here. This will be the highlight, so the first thing I want to do is move it up and to the left, so I'll click the transform effect to edit it. I'll change my settings to negative one in the horizontal and vertical fields, and whenever I make a change, Illustrator has to redraw the other effects, which is kind of annoying. Now I'm going to change the blending mode to screen, and once again I'll wait for it to redraw, All right, now I have one stroke that's the highlight and the other for the shadow. And now we can go back to the original path and stroke it with the same color you used for the background. And there's your simple emboss effect. This remains editable, so let's say I wanted to increase the blur. I can go back to the appearance panel and do that. Now, when you've got it the way you like it, you can make a graphic style to use on other objects. I'll unhide the edges to make sure it's selected, then just click the New button in the Graphic Styles panel, and now I can draw another rectangle and click on the new graphic style to apply those same settings. So that's the technique for a stroke, and you can do it with a fill also. I have this star shape, and I'll fill it with my bluish color, now click Add New Fill in the Appearance panel and change its fill to 50% gray. This is going to be the shadow, so as before, change its blending mode to Multiply. Now make sure you have the fill selected, not just the opacity, the fill, and go back up to Effects, Distort and Transform to Transform. And I'm going to move it down and over by about two points. Keep this selected and then add the Gaussian Blur effect. I just skipped over the rendering part because it's boring, and now make a duplicate of this fill by again dragging it onto the new icon. This will be the highlight, so click to edit the transform effect and change the values to negative ones. Then click to edit the opacity and change the blending mode to screen. And there's the effect on a filled shape. You can make a new graphic style from this, and if you double click the style in the Graphic Styles panel, you can give it a name. This effect also works for type. Here I have a line of text, and I can select the type object, then click my graphic style to apply the effects. And the type remains fully editable. Illustrator doesn't have a built-in emboss effect, but with a few quick steps you can make one yourself and use it on just about anything. 